Morning, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're off. <laughs> um, uh, my name is George Ramsworth. I think you probably know me at this stage. Uh, and I'm joined this morning by a colleague of mine, uh, Patrick Going. Uh, Patrick has particular expertise in the whole area. At least I hope he's particular expertise in the whole area of uh, calf accommodation, because that's what he's on here to talk to us this morning about. And Pat, I'm gonna, we're going to show you here uh, a slide from the or a board that was prepared for the current series of calf care on farm events. And we're going to focus a little bit this morning on uh, knowing your number. In other words, how many cows, how many calves can you safely rear in a particular shed that you have on your farm? So I suppose just to put the whole thing in context, if you go back to 2010, in the month of February, there were 250,000 calves born on Irish dairy farms. And this February, I'd estimate it will be much closer to 800,000 calves born in the month of February. So with, with the knock-on effects of a large number of calves, a huge number of calves being born in an increasingly concentrated period, it's creating you know, more and more of a pressure point on the accommodation on your farm. So Pat, maybe you'd, you'd bring, it through, bring us through some of the specs that are really important for uh, safely rearing calves uh, on Irish uh, dairy farms. Thanks, George. Um, thanks for the compliment there, and you took it away as quick. Um, look, I suppose, yeah, look, I suppose with everything, over time, the herd sizes have increased. Um, people got more land or stocked up. Uh, maybe the milk empire was extended due to calf housing, and the calf calving facilities tend to be one that are, just gets sweated in the expansion phase. Yeah. And then over time, they start... Um, to come to a point where they, they can do no more, but we keep stocking on the calves. Um, and again, I suppose sometimes with calves, it's a bit like having children that you forget. <laughs> yeah, you go through a season and you, you get out of it and then the milk checks come and things are good and you get into the back end of the year and then it kicks off again. And sometimes we forget about the hardship we had in the pre previous year. Yeah. Uh, a lot of that hardship tends not it's not the first calves that cause the problem they move through the system relatively straightforward it's the the bunch that come in through february so the early calves landed in january or early first week of february uh if you think about it they would have huge amount of space because there's nothing else there uh to tend to get up and going fairly quick um but it's the load of calves to come as they keep coming and as the system starts to go under pressure so yeah. the first thing i would say is it's space, space for a calf, George. Um, I think when a calf has the space to lie, it just takes the pressure off the shed. And what we're recommending there is anywhere between 1.7 meters squared to two meters or 2.2 .2 meters squared. So that's square meters. So I think one thing we could ask you to do is actually go measure your sheds. Yeah. Um, and see, so like if you had a four span shed, that one one with the other is 20 meters long, it's six meters wide. Um, so how, that gets your square meters, and then you divide that by two. I'd say the half ranges, I'd say you divide by two, just to give the rough number of calves you'll be able to keep in that, that um, shed. I do also think, George, that sometimes the smaller figure, I, what's happening now, probably one was the price of calves, one is the price of milk powder, Maybe some, maybe down the line, a bit of change in legislation. The calves may have to stay longer on your farm. Okay. So what you might have got away with before with a smaller type of calf, maybe you know the lower end of the thing there, 1.6, 1.7 meters squared a calf. As the calf gets bigger, it needs more space. Um, so you'll have a double whammy there, I suppose, is you have more calves in the same area, but the calves are actually bigger. Yeah. So I think when you're doing your calculations, George, I'd, I'd work a minimum of two meters squared uh, per calf. That's a nice round figure as well to work off. Tell yeah. us then, how, I think you were saying to me before this, Pat, that the, generally if you have enough floor space, you usually have enough airspace. Is there kind of a criteria there in airspace? Yeah, ge ge generally speaking, look, unless you go into a real old uh, shed or a very uh, low roof on it, it won't work. Um, but again, when you basically uh, you need between six and eight cubic meters per calf of airspace. But so as you give them more floor space, by default, you're giving them more airspace. And, and I think, I think if, if it was the one thing I would say from the webinar, if you can just go in and create the floor space or make sure you have it, um, 
you'll get go a long way to solving a lot of the problems. Um, but uh, if people want to calculate themselves, yeah, six to eight cubic meters per calf. Wow. Of so that's to, to do that. Then it's the length by the breadth by the average height of the shed, <clears throat> and that'll give you a cubic meters, and then divide by the calves in the shed. Okay. And tell us then about the the whole area then about air inlet and outlet. The air inlet seems to be twice the size or twice the area of the outlet. Why is that? To get a lot of these things is to get movement of air through the shed, and I think sometimes there's a um, there's a if you go into a stale shed or a shed or when you basically if you open the door you stand into it there's a there's a, a massive smell it's usually the ammonia um yeah. that you're smelling and if you're smelling that that means whatever pathogens are in the air are also being inhaled by the calf so to help that what we need is movement of air to, to for cool air to be coming in and hot air to be rising out to clear out the shed and to leave for a better environment for the calves so a, a closed down shed Again, you may get away with in the earlier part of the year because the numbers of calves are very small, um, might work. But as the pressure comes on and also as the days get milder and the heat builds in the shed, um, it becomes basically a perfect environment for pathogens to, to yeah. grow and survive um, and to cause issues for calves. So for that, I, we need a movement. Bit. Sorry, George. Yeah, I remember reading before that uh, if you have ammonia in a house, it causes paralysis of the cilia in the in the windpipe. Yeah. So you, you get an accumulation rather than a kind of a flushing out of any bits of dirt and crud that go down into the into the into the calf's lungs. That's yeah, another so reason. For, yeah. So for uh, ventilation, I said you need air to be pushed in to push up the hot air and then the outlet to let it out. So you need yeah. the... And I think too, George, I don't... When you're standing in the shed, um, you should actually feel... I won't say a draft for the movement of air. Um, so a lot of people get worried about that there's a movement of air around if you're standing in the shed. It's... Up at that point, that's good. That's because you're moving fresh air into the shed. But you don't want drafts is where the calves are lying down. Now, you take most calves when they're lying down, like it's very low to the ground, like so. Yeah, I think it's a different environment. I think there's a lot of people get you know, the sheds are too airy, uh, too open, uh, uh, in some scenarios, and that's creating one issue. But then they, they over correct and close it down too much. Um, and yeah, there should, it should be fresh air. If you and again, it's another simple thing to look at. You, you, if you go back to last year and you walked into your shed in the middle of February. The first thing you get is the smell. Um, yeah. You have an yeah. issue, probably. Got a problem. Yeah. So a question, question coming in there, Pat, about, about space sheeting. Uh, what about it? Is it as it a role to play? I wonder. It depends on the size. space sheeting. No, it's ventilated sheeting or space sheeting. Yeah, well, they said they said space sheeting on the question there. Yeah. So to, the way you measure it, uh, so we have the inlets on the slide for those who can see the slide. So it's. Um, an inlet of 0.08 meters squared. So you go to a bay, 4.8 meters, and you basically measure the gaps. Um, you'd be able to calculate it out and same for the outlet. So, so if you look at space sheeting, the traditional space sheeting, um, the amount of gaps for the amount of sheets is very small, like so it probably won't let enough in. It's about 10%. Yeah, we wouldn't be yeah. I wouldn't be a mad fan myself for the space sheeting. You find that they often get overgrown on the outside or, or just there isn't enough. Get clogged and there isn't enough uh, sheeting there or space to let the decent. So you're, talk, you're talking about Yorkshire boarding a bit better because there's, there's more uh, bigger gaps, and they all that's uh, when you have two boards either side of the, the main timber. Yeah. Uh, and the idea there, there's a lot more inlet to let the air in, um, and you also because they're staggered, it prevents a, a, um, a wind blowing through of you, it breaks up the air yeah. as they come through. You, you uh, vented that. sheeting can help, but again, if you look at vented sheeting and depend on vented sheeting, it can be the amount of open area and the amount of air to get through can be not as much as you'd expect. Yeah. Um, in some of them scenarios, what people will do is they'll push out the bottom of the sheet. So if you angle the bottom of the sheet, so put the cleats to the outside of the girder yeah. and hang the timber on the outside of it, it creates a small bit of a gap at the bottom underneath the sheet to allow air to circulate in. And that can improve uh, if, as a quick fix uh, to be able to improve the airflow into the shed. Uh, and you still have all the benefits of none of the rain or the weather get in because it's coming underneath the bottom of the sheet. Yeah, it can work really, really well, that particular one. But I think the, the inlet then needs to be probably about five feet or 
higher from above above ground level. Yeah, it, it, most people places have a wall around it, so in most cash sheds to be five six foot, so it'll be coming in from underneath that. It's just a if you're looking at something you want to change it quick for this year, it's something that relatively straightforward to do, particularly if you're out to weld yourself. So just to summarise a few of those um, uh, specs there, Pat, on, on calf sheds, uh, floor space of around two metres, an air space of around eight cubic metres, an air inlet of 0.08 metres squared per calf, an outlet of 0.04 square metres per calf. And there's one yeah. listed there as well, Pat, it's the floor slope of one in 20. Maybe just tell us a little bit about that or why that's important. Yeah, so nearly of anything with, with concrete, there should always be a slope to get moisture off it. And, and if you look at the, the one in 20 is nearly the rule of thumb for everything. So it's the same as it's nearly a, on, a, on a cubicle bed. And it's yeah. the same as what we use on farm roadways to move. And the reason for that is we're trying to move moisture off where we want it to, uh, to get it away as quick as possible without the slope being so aggressive that it comes, uh, you know, that you're really walking sideways up the shed. Okay. So if you have a very flat floor and the moisture is nowhere to get it, it's very hard to retain a dry bed. So just because you have the floor space, but if the, if the area where the calves are lying is wet, again, we're working against ourselves for the comfort of the calf. And again, it's another area where bacteria and other things can build up. So a fall of one in 20 will pull the moisture away, will, uh, will save the bedding, and will also mean that the, the calves will stay drier. I think one time, something I would say though, George, is you can create a fall of one in 20 handy enough, but be, if we look at a shed, say again, a four or five span shed, if you're falling that from front to back, so if you start at the front and you went back five uh, the five bays at a fall of one in 20, um, First thing you know is be the, the back wall, the concrete at the back wall will be quite high towards the front. And if you were doing that in smaller group pens or whatever all the way along, the calves at the back of the shed will have a great life because they'll be dry mm. the whole time. Um, where the calves at the front of the shed will be swamped because all the effluent will be running down through the uh, each individual pen. Yeah. So ideally, we would fall from left to right if you take that type of shed again, a four bay shed, maybe 30 foot wide. If you're trying to follow from left to right or into this, or even if you can, to if you had a central passage uh, into the center. Yeah. So you don't want a, a very long run that it's going because some calves maybe on the just ha on, happen to be in the bad, the, the wrong pen, if you like. Um, and what ideally what you try to do is make the channel. So if you get the moisture on a one and 20 fall on a relatively short run and into a channel, that, and let the channel do the work to get the, the effluent away as quick as you can. And again, there'll be other uh, wins on that as well, because you're getting the, uh, it's mainly the urine out of the shed as quick as you can. That'll help from the ammonia build up as well. So, and the will also help then from when we go back to talk about your inlets and outlets for keeping the shed fresh. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Pat, just to go back to the ventilation there for one second, there's a question came back in again there about uh, space sheeting. And it was in terms of the roof space. Roof sheeting, yeah. Oh, the roof space sheeting, yeah. Um, would be a major fan of the calves just because trying to keep it dry. Um, I think you're far better with a, um, a canopy uh, to let it out. Yeah. Um, I think in older cattle and then um, in slat houses, no problem. Um, cubicle sheds, I'm still, you know, some, 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 a little bit of moisture down as well, no matter, depending on why the rain, the way the rain, the rain is blowing. So, yes, it helps it does that out, but I think for younger stock, I wouldn't be um, a major fan because it, it, it's, it's across the whole shed uh, um, on, on it and it can let some rain down in. Okay. Now, I have seen it done. Do you know where you, every second sheet is raised or is it a sheet here? Uh, that's not space sheet. That's slightly different. Now, space sheet to me is where yeah, there's a gap between every, yeah, yeah. every sheet. Yeah. But the other so one, that's, that's, well. that's raising individual sheets to create an outlet. Um, again, the rain and you want to come sideways again to that. Yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll work pretty well usually. Yeah, and it might work in a case where there's a long, a very long shed and poor ventilation across the house. Yeah, okay. so an older shed. So typically, calves will the old lean to on a round roof shed. A lot of calves end up there. Um, it can be hard to put a canopy on it, and and by their nature, they can be, you know, the round roof, and if you start messing with, it, yeah. So raising sheets within that, 
um, will help uh, to get the outlet up. Um, uh, but you'd have to raise them across the shed because to get their movement across the shed. So Pat, then we'll just move on for a minute and we'll come to the last kind of an area. If you're a bit short, you do the sums and your number is say 50 and you have 70 or you expect to have 70 by the end of, of February, what, what kind of options are available to you uh, to try and uh, overcome that, that challenge? Yeah, and, and, and again, I suppose come back to it, I think pressure, what we got away with in the past, I think you've highlighted at the start, we may not get away with going forward because of the... Um, Calves may stay longer on farm. So long term, uh, just I think to avoid the situation going forward. And I know Martina Gormley, and you've done the figures too, George. Like that if calves start with a compact spring calf, and if calves start staying on farm between four and five weeks, you nearly need space for about well, minimum of 90% of the total calving. So it'd be a hundred. Uh, cows calving in the compact spring calving at a certain point you could nearly have all calves on farm um, till they start moving off just because you know they're staying on farm and they're still calving so long term you just need to bear that in mind as well but in the short term um, if you do find yourself that you're a bit short um, obviously if you can move the calves to a and sell them earlier um, than planned if you are to get someone to take them that would, that's a very straightforward simple system Um and again, yeah, okay, you don't want to be giving away calves around like that, but but the heart may save you, or the the the, the pressure it takes off the balance of the calves, um, it could, should, it could be worth considering. Yeah. Uh, the other one then is temporary accommodation. So what we're talking about there is, as time moves by, do other sheds become available? Um, the typical one is a straw shed. Um, if it has a concrete floor on it, um, can you one thing move the straw out? Uh, maybe reek it as the weather improves or as it, as the shed becomes half full as you're using the straw is there an option there to put calves in there on a temporary basis till you're able to start selling calves um it just again them type sheds you just want they can be the opposite they can be quite drafty because they tend to just hold straw so just watch them that they're you know there's not ghosts of wind going through them but you can create a lot of wind breaks and things like using straw bales to you know, to, to give the calves comfort in them type sheds. Um, it, a lot of this could be just 20 or 30 calves, George, and a lot of farms that you could just, and you only need space for them for two to three weeks. Yeah, um, exactly. To get you, uh, and, and what they're really doing there, it's taking the pressure off the balance of the calves and hopefully then we won't have as uh, much problems with our calves. Yeah. The other one, some people have looked at, um, Move them out. like the silage pits and putting in them onto, um, what you call them, the huts. Um, again, uh, you have to be able to manage the effluent. If you are putting them on a silage pit, it ideally works going across the back wall rather than coming down the side of the wall for the same reason as that the effluent will tend to fall um, from top to bottom. Yeah. So just watch that, that the if you're putting a hutch up on the very top and you're coming down by the length of the wall, um, that the, the bottom hutch could take a lot of the effluent. Um, so just be careful of that. Now, them hutches are in short supply and they're quite dear as well. So, but if some people have it, it is an option. What about putting Same, them out? The other one is taking this. Sorry, George. What about putting them outdoors altogether? Yeah. Um, nearly taking years. stronger calves uh, into a sheltered field or creating a shelter belt in the field by putting bales out in the formation of a, in a cross. Um, yeah, so yeah. basically, no matter what way the wind is coming, they can it's go to the right either. corner, basically. Yeah. Um, taking a strong, again, it's, it's small numbers moving quick for short space of time. So if the weather's right, um, you have stronger calves, usually your heifer calves, um, maybe they can go back onto once a day, fed with a, a teat feed around the field. Um, and with a good shelter field, uh, could be the, it's, it's the cheapest solution of them all, George. Yeah. Okay, but and again, it's taking the, the bigger calf out early as well, which is kind of the one you want to move because they're taking up the most space. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. And okay, look, that's that's great, Pat. Uh, if we just have a quick look then, and uh, so what are our take home messages? They're around assess your requirements now, make alternative arrangements if you see yourself coming short, but clearly do not overstock the existing facility that you have. It's just not worth the, the risk or the effort. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any last minute questions for, for Patrick, now is your, your time to pop them into the, the chat function there, the question function there. 
Uh, otherwise, what we'll do is we'll we'll charge. Sorry, that like yeah. I suppose we to avoid the same question next year again. If you do find yourself in short um, short supply of calf yeah. housing, don't let the year go by and be in the same situation again next year. Maybe it's a time to look at creating something or a better system that we're not here uh, talking about the same thing next year. Okay. Pads, correct me if I'm wrong, this, 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 the, the detail is that farm to farm movement of calves from 11 days of age and for export it's 15. Isn't that, are they the minimum ages for calves? I think, yep. I think pretty much that, pretty much think that's what it is. Guys and ladies, next week um, on the Let's Talk Dairy webinar, we're joined by Michelle McGrath, a vet with Animal Health Ireland, to talk about successful weaning of calves. And just keep your eye out for the, the remaining calf care events that are taking place around the country over the next week or so. They've been really well attended. They're on the Chagask and AHI websites in terms of where those events are taking place. So keep your eye out for one and try and get to one of the, your local events. Thanks very much, Patrick, for a very informative uh, chat there on calf accommodation. God bless and mind yourself. Thanks very much, George. Bye, everybody. Bye.